I'm Jose Nicolas Alvaguao. I worked on the new Flutter Gallery that we introduced in Flutter Interact. And today we're going to talk about the process that we did into building it and some of the three cool things I learned uh, making an app, right? Uh, so the agenda is adapt, the three things I'm going to be talking about is adaptive layout, accessibility, and internationalization. Uh, but first, Flutter was uh, first built for mobile, but now Flutter uh, talks about desktop program, like making applications for desktop and websites. So that introduces a lot of new things for app development, and that's one of the topics I'm going to talk about, adaptive layout. Uh, so here's the first uh, Flutter gallery. The first Flutter gallery had like no design input into it, but then the second one we had design input from someone called Liam, and it looks much better. But one of the problems that came into the new release for Flutter Gallery was that the new Flutter Gallery, like that, the, that Flutter is going to introduce a desktop layout, right? But with desktop layouts, this wasn't going to work because on desktop it would look like this. So we need to have an adaptive layout for this, right? Uh, so we need, we need to make a full rebuild. And in order to make the full rebuild, we, sp we spoke with the design agency called Toaster, uh, and then Toaster asked us, like, do we want Google material in it, right? And we're like, okay, not necessarily. And then do we want a Cupertino like, style to it? And we're like, not necessarily, just try to make it with any the style you have. So Toaster, we gave them the permission to work with any design system, and then they came out with this cool design. So this is the old Flutter Gallery, this is the new one. Uh, looks much cleaner. Uh, this jacket has the theming if you haven't noticed it. <laughs> and it's much better. And here's how it looks for desktop compared to the old layout. Uh, so if you notice, both of them look very, very, look very different. Uh, one clearly wasn't made for desktop, the other one has an desktop layout to it. Uh, wait. So the new Flutter, the existing Flutter Gallery already had three uh, studies. One was Shrine, the other one was Rally, and the other one was Crane. These studies are pretty much cool applications you can make with Flutter, uh, and demonstrations of like the material package and the Cupertino package. Something we introduced though is adaptive layout. So adaptive layout is like going from desktop layout to mobile layout. Uh, that's one of the topics I'm going to talk about. Uh, we also introduced accessibility. So like. For example, if you can't, like if your text ceiling has to be bigger, then we introduce that feature to the application. Um, there's also, in case you can't see, we you can just use talk uh, call, talk back and it and let you can still use the Flutter gallery. And the last one's internationalization. We support a bunch of different languages because we worked with an uh, internal Google translation team, and they translated the Flutter gallery from just English to uh, have I guess 50 plus languages and, uh, and another cool feature actually is that uh, in the, whenever you check out the samples, the material samples and the Cupertino samples there's also like actual code samples into it so this is the actual code that makes up that component so I'll talk about that later uh, the adaptive layout, the way we, the way we approached it is we were, we were, our team was composed of one TO and four new engineers, I was one of the new engineers Another one's over there, and the other two aren't here right now. But uh, basically, we went to the since this is a very new, I like this is a very new feature of Flutter since it's desktop layout. We we approached it by everyone making their own type of like way to solve this problem, and then collectively we formed our ideas and try to make the best way to have an adaptive layout. We spoke with uh, Hans, which did a lot of. The, he's been working on Flutter for five years, and then he made what we're going to be talking about right now. And basically, Hans recommended, uh, he, uh, I think it's the next slide. Um, so, material shows a f flexibility. Best pr I'm going to talk about best practices for adaptive layout. Uh, and for the best practices, there's breaking points. And yeah. So here's what we came to. So it, what we did was we created an enum desktop and mobile, we didn't talk about breaking point for tablets, but uh, we just took the media query of the shortest side 
and we made sure it was bigger than a certain breaking point. For us, that breaking point was 700. Uh, so if it was bigger than 700 on the shortest side, then it would uh, use the desktop layout. Otherwise, it would just use the mobile layout. And this is what we use to like organize our application. Uh, yep, just going to a little bit more. So this is so this is what we used to call it. If is this display desktop, and then the context. If it, this would mean if it's bigger than 700, it would return that. Otherwise, we return the mobile version. Uh, Ali is this accessibility, so support for screen readers, semantic uh, labels, semantic announcements, custom semantics for graphs, uh, support for text scaling, like I was mentioning. Uh, and so we had to include all these features into uh, the application. And we use this using semantics, which is another new widget in Flutter. Um, and we also had to support for focus, and focus is extremely new too. Focus is pretty much a widget for Flutter. Uh, that lets you tab between different widgets on desktop layout. I don't know if you guys have ever used tab whenever you are, trying, are using a website. So we have to have focus support too. Uh, so here that we did semantics. I, so in, like by default, images include semantics. So if you don't want an image to say what it is, you just exclude the semantics, make that true. Um, if you have an image and you need it to say something specific, then you use a semantics label. So anytime semantics is on, then it goes to that image and it tells you it's a cheeseburger. Uh, this is how we adjust the size for text scaling, so making it bigger and smaller in the app. So it, it, when you go to the settings mode, you can make it bigger or smaller. And we use custom painter semantics too in case we had a in case we need to uh, add specific semantics to a certain widget. This is how we use it. And then internationalization. Interna internationalization is basically adding uh, language to all our components, uh, which is really cool. We use Flutter to do this. Uh, something really cool that I've never done before is basically, in English, I know a lot of languages are LTR, meaning left to right. So the way we're used to it is we see it left to right. But in other languages, it's RTL. So uh, we had to figure out how to do that too. And we also incorporated internationalization with Ali support. So in case uh, you're using your application in a different language, like let's say Spanish or something, then the semantics in it will also be Spanish, which is really cool too. Um, so instead of, instead of doing, when you line something, most people think of LTR languages. So like when you line things, you line things to the left usually, but instead of using a line left or a line right, you could use, what we use was a line uh, start and a line end. And so basically what this would do is, if start meant left for LTR, then it will start on the left. But if start means right for RTL, then it will start on the right. So it would, so if you used our application in uh, Hebrew or something, then the, the application would flip over if you, because that's how it would feel more native to people that speak that language. So it, it's not like, I thought that was a pretty cool feature. Personally, I thought that was real cool. <laughs> yeah, so this is how we, sorry? Does that mean their back are on the right side? Uh, yeah, so the settings icon, you know how it, it's usually on the right side for us? Uh, while it's in the, gal in the gallery, it was on the right side. If you translate to an RTL language, it's going to be on the left side. Uh, what about top down written languages? I don't remember. I, I, no. <laughs> yeah. We don't support. <laughs> yeah. So basically, um, this, is how we, this is how we choose gallery localization. Uh, we had a um, ARB file. ARB file are standards in languages, and and then I guess we just import it like that. And that, this is this is connected to the ARB file, and it just sees it from there. To summarize, you really <laughs> so I went real quick. So I wanted to show you the actual Flutter gallery. I should have probably shown you that while presenting, but. Uh, we built the 
Kagawi from the ground up, and we're a group of new engineers, and we did this within a month and a half. So, and we did all this. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, adaptive layouts are really cool too, instead of having to program in multiple languages. So instead of like making your application in Swift or, or Java and then making your website in HTML or something, you can do all this with just Flutter, which I think is really cool. Um, accessibility is easily achievable. This is something I'm not too familiar with because I, I just graduated, so I, to be honest, I never knew about this. But now that I do know, I realize how much more important it is to include accessibility in your applications. Uh, and it's pretty easy in Flutter. And the cool thing is if you do it in Flutter, then not only is your Android application accessible, but so is your iPhone application and any platform you're performing on. Um, <coughs> internationalization. Like, it, like the LTR stuff I was talking about. And you can see the gallery if you go to this website. Uh, I mean, you can see the GitHub code if you go to this website. And this is me. <laughs> Who am I? I just graduated. <laughs> but yeah, so if you, I want to I show you the gallery now. But the, if you want to see the gallery, go to this link. If you want to if you if you download the gallery, you just search up Flutter Gallery. Uh, here, on the third one, you can see the uh, release dates, the releases we've had, and then the fourth one is also the same one as the first one. So, yeah, I want to just show you the gallery now. So here's the gallery on desktop. I'm gonna, just going to reload it. Yeah, this nice animation. <laughs> and then, so here's, here are four applications. These four applications are just the cool Things you can like it shows you what you can make with Flutter, and this was all made with Flutter. That you can see that it uh, has a desktop layout. If I make the link smaller, then you can see that it changes, and then it'll have the the uh, mobile layout. And it's cut off. Yeah. Uh, so here, here's the settings like. Uh, so this is what I was talking about. You can make the text bigger, uh, and you can still use the gallery pretty well. Uh, for for language, let's switch to Arabic. My bad. Uh, so if I switch to Arabic, things flip over, which is which was easy to make with the gallery. Um, and yeah, and theming of course. And what, something, another cool feature we made was uh, the like so. If you so, this is like this. This is the material uh, package. It's pretty much every every time you use a you make a flutter gallery, you import this package. And then here's how you use the here's how you use the button uh, widget. Right? It's pretty simple, right? But in case you haven't been exposed to it. Then there's also the demo code. And this is the actual demo code that's being used to make this. Like this is, every single time we add a new component to the Flutter uh, gallery, we have to run the script, and the script creates, it, it, create, it creates uh, this code from the code right there. So it, this is the actual code, and, it, and you can learn a lot from it too. So yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Because I used the app before, and I think it's really helpful if you need to get some. Um, I mean, if you're not sure, should I use a chip for this? Should I use a button? And you can get some inspiration from this. But uh, German translation is really poor, I must say. Uh, because if we, I mean, if you use these kind of uh, modules, you always use the English name in your code, so you're very. It's very, it sounds very weird if you have the German translation. For example, with buttons, there's Schaltfläche, which is something we would never use in German. Yeah, I, I actually understand too. And I, I don't know if you noticed, but like when, when we translated, the material library and the Cupertino library were, were stuck to their English version, because that's how you import it, right? But like we didn't do it with the buttons, because maybe you don't know what a button is in English, so it's, you can just translate it, right? I understand, because when we were translating this, uh, I, I speak Spanish, and a little bunch of our, our teams, like collectively, 
material now speaks like 14 different languages, so we were going through it, and we understood some of the, like, it's not perfect, but it's something. <laughs> no, no, it's, yeah. I mean, I love the app, just um, more about Yeah, I, I honestly do use it too, like, sometimes I, like, want to know a specific widget, and I can just see it from there, and the, I really like that you can see the actual code. And here are some other applications in case I didn't show it. So here's Crane, and this was all made Flutter, of course. There's an adaptive layout, so here's how Crane looks on desktop, and then if you shrink it, then it has the um, mobile layout. Yeah. And there, so there's a few different examples. Any other questions? So the adaptive layout is working with like the... The adaptive layout is really working with like the media queries in CSS, right? Like we are defining some kind of breakpoints, and then uh, and until these breakpoints, you're just going to display that that amount of uh, components and stuff like that. Yeah, that's how we did it. So uh, once you reach like you, we looked at the smallest, uh, like we looked at the height and width, and whichever one was smaller, we had to make sure the breakpoint, like, like let's say if the width was smaller than 700, then it would turn into mobile layout. Yeah. I also have a question. So, in the code that you showed, is it generated code or is it kind of like in Dart that, that it's actually running it? No, uh, so it's, it's just a text that's generated beforehand. Like, you know. He's the one. He's the one that actually made that code, so he can answer it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so how this happens is that um, it's not running. Um, so the code you see inside it, right, it's not running from there, but what we do is that before the program is run, we have little comment markers in the source code that tells you what part of the source code should be displayed in the final outcome, and before the program is compiled, uh, we have a little helper tool to extract those code, and when it's being compiled, it's already there. So it is the exact code that is running, but it is not running from there. <laughs> yeah. Thank so we, you. Yeah, uh, we use text uh, to like so for example, the uh, there's and some and so, like in some of the Dart files, like we imported the entire source code, but I think in some of them we didn't, and the, and we use like I think three comp three texts to tell Dart what to use and whatnot. I mean to use to like generate. What to use and what to not what to what not to use. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Um, another code related question. Is this code gonna be kind of maintained and change over time? Like with new versions of Flutter, new versions of Dart, new versions of features? I would say yes. Yes. Um, it's gonna definitely change over time. Uh, for example, we uh, when we made this for Flutter Interact, uh, Fortnite wasn't there, right? And we just added that recently. Uh, we've, I, we've added a few different widgets, and we're gonna keep updating it and whatnot to make sure, yeah. So basically, let's say in one year when I'm updating my app, I could just go and yeah. through from whatever I copied this code and get the new version. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's, it's, I think it's gonna be, yeah, I, I, would, I'm, I would give, 100% yeah. Well, 99% yes. <laughs> Someone else has questions? No? Okay. Alright, thanks guys. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs>